Hello guys, and welcome to chapter 21's homework. Now, due to some technical issues, I'm not going to be able to actually truly go through it like I've done in prior videos. For some reason, Connect, every time I try and record, will not let me go to your view. So, we're just going to go basically through my preview. So, it's going to show the answers. As I go through, I'm going to try and explain it the way it goes. So, starting off, the first five questions, again, are just videos. So, we're going to go to question number six. And question number six is going to make you do a fixed budget or flexible units. So, when you do this question, the main thing you want to do, first off, is you're going to have to figure out which is the variables and which is the fixed. So remember this. First off, it's going to be sales always at top. And then variable costs are anything that will change due to units being produced. And fixed does not. And the cool thing with fixed is that it's going to be the same numbers for all three units. Make sure you put your fixed costs in this one that says total fixed cost okay that column and then just run it across okay not too bad there what we've got here though is that they've actually provided us with one of the units they budgeted 14,000 units so we can go ahead and put the 14,000 units here now I know on your homework this is going to be totally blank. So try to follow along with the steps. Okay. So. We can put this middle one. All the numbers in. And then the next step that you will do. With this problem. Is you're going to take. The cost. And divide it by the total units. This is how we get the variable amount per unit. Again. If I went to the calculator, I can go 3024 divided by 14,000, and that's where I get my 216. Okay? From there, take these variable units and multiply it up by however many units. So this would have been 216. Time, times 12,000 units and that's where I get the numbers here okay same thing with 16,000 now don't forget to do contribute margin contribute margin again is your cells minus your variable okay from there after you figure out your fixed, you're going to take whatever your contribute margin is and subtract out the fixed, and that should give you your number down here for your income for operations. Watch out! You may actually have one where it's going to be negative. So make sure you put that negative in front. Again, due to whatever's happening with Connect, I'm not able to actually sh go through the process with you. I apologize for that. So this video may be actually quicker than usual. So don't forget that usually on the side, you may have the hint button or the uh, ebook. Those help too. But this is just a basic one that we're just trying to figure out, again, where are variable. So again, take all these costs and divide them by wherever your middle units is and that's going to produce these numbers from there multiply take these numbers and times it by your other units and just don't forget to subtract out for contribute margin and then income from operations that's really what's going on here okay nothing too much going exactly it's just going to take you a little while to actually do Alright, so question seven. Uh, 
Alright. Question 7 in itself is another flexible budget. The problem that we run into this question is that notice that they're completely different. Okay? They are, we have 7,000 for our fixed and actuals 5,900. Now, this is going to affect your sales and your variable expenses. Reason why is because we got to get to 5,900. So what you're going to do is take in your sales and divide it by your fixed budget. So, and that gives us the $80. And then you take the actual units that we did and multiply it by the amount. That's where we got the 472 that you see in the answer. Okay? So, from there, you got to do this also with our variable expenses. And remember, sales minus variable equals contributing margin. Okay? From there, you can have our income from operations, fixed expense does not change. So whatever number it tells you up here, right here, for our budget is 163, actual is 153. Now, you're probably thinking, uh, how do I get variable expenses? Okay. Well, if this is my actual fixed, this is my total expense, just take the total expense minus the fixed expense, and that will get you your variable expenses. Okay? So from here, all we have to do is figure out our variances. And the best way is just taking it, the fixed budget and subtract from actual. And yes, this one shows everything positive, but you can have negative. Just Watch out if sales is negative, if you took flex minus actual, it would be favorable. Same thing with these, with contribute margin and income. Of course, if actual is better than the actual standard budget, they should be favorable because we made more income. If expense is greater, that's unfavorable because we paid out more money. But if it's basically our actual is less than our flex, our standard, that would actually be a favorable. Means we kind of got more money back because we didn't spend that much. Okay? So, again, I'm apologizing a lot in this video because of what's going on with the way that Connect has kind of just put this like hammer where I can't show show. Alright. So again, this is the explanation if you actually want to go through this whole aspect. I just basically just gave it to y'all in just that simple verbal form. But hopefully that helps. Again, hints are going to do the best. Now, question 8 in itself, I don't like how Connect does... Uh, direct labor and direct materials. I like how we did it in our formula. So, right here, these, I would probably suggest to do it that way. But, for them, this is how they do it. They're going to take the actual cost over here, actual quantity, actual price, and you're going to fill this in according to the chart, just right up here. And they've already done the multiplication, you just have to put the number in. And same thing over here with standard. The only thing you got to figure out is standard quantity. And that's really just basically taking how many units and multiplying by our pounds. So, really, a 300 times 15 pounds is 1, 2, 4, 500. 
And that's how they got that number. Okay. Once you do that, this will actually fill out. So no worries there. And then you got this middle. Okay. So the middle is going to be actual quantity times standard price. What they're doing is taking the two that actually show up in both of our direct materials formulas. As you can see, actual quantity, actual quantity, and standard price, standard price. And connect just basically multiplies these two and then subtracts from each one. Now, when they do that, uh, basically they're going to give us two numbers and it's going to fill in right here and the first one is going to be our price variance since that has actual price this one has standard quantity so that's going to be our quantity variance now again this is the reason why I don't like how connect does this it keeps all the numbers positive but as you can see the standard, I mean, really our standard quantity, if we looked over here, standard quantity minus actual quantity, actual quantity is greater than standard. So this one would actually be a negative number if we used our formulas. So in the real world, this would have been unfavorable. Well, after that, if you basically add positive number plus a negative number you would actually come out to 13,980 okay the strange thing again is that it's positive I would probably just do this on a separate piece of paper after getting this part in and actually practice using these formulas to show the positive and the negative and right here that will give you if this was negative or positive and don't forget to put these in. You need to put direct, total direct materials. Now, required two does exactly the same thing. And again, we put our actual, actual hours and actual rate, standard cost to standard hours, standard rate. And we're again going to have to figure out standard hours. So again, you take your 8,300 and times it by however many direct labor hours okay here we just fill in actual hours and standard rate again those are the only two that pop up in both formulas so there's actual hours standard rate and again connect is going to basically fill out most of these numbers for you now when we look at this, first off, actual hours is greater than standard hours. So that means our direct labor variancy right here will be negative, unfavorable. Same thing with the rate. Notice it's greater than our standard. So this will also would have been a negative number. Since they're both negative, you would have to add these two together to create your total direct labor variance of 67,420. So again, I would just fill this in, let it go, and then really just redo it using these formulas, okay? So that you've got what you need for the exam. It's just, it's really odd how they do it. They're trying to, I guess, simplify it, but it feels like they make it more complicated than what it needs to be and I'm just not a big fan of how Connect done it but hey if you like doing it this way you're more than welcome to go ahead and do this on the test as long as you come out to about the same answer okay so see the way I just I, I this, this just doesn't matter mess with me so again I wish I can go through this with y'all I don't know what the problem is that's going on with connect that won't let me actually physically do these problems so you can see the, the steps and the process 
but of course I'm going to do the best I can to get you going. So this is number nine. Number nine is a little bit more difficult in the way that they approach this and right here it will be in required one we have to figure out fixed overhead applied so first one is fixed overhead divided by direct labor hours to get to our 220 and then it's our standard direct labor hours and you're going to notice this number does not appear up here because one we have 24,400 and then we have 37214 so we don't have that number so how do we get to that number is going to be taking basically should be the 37,000 units multiplying by our direct labor hours per unit 0.61 and that's where we get this number the standard direct labor hours okay so that one's a little bit tough to get to and then our fixed overhead which is 53680 53680 divided by our actual hours 2.2 yeah so to get to this number you have to take basically the fixed overhead did you see total budget fixed overhead divided by our standard hours that will get you your 2.2 okay and then standard direct labor hours again is how many actual units produced times our direct labor hours per unit once you do that all you do have to do is multiply the two and that will get our fixed overhead applied okay so of course this one falls down right here then we take our total fixed overhead budgeted and that's going to come out to our volume uh, variance okay now if this number is positive it will be unfavorable if it happens to be negative it's going to be favorable so again overhead tends to want to be the opposite child required two is going to take a little bit more to do first off we do get the actual budget which is 320 and our fix is already with us it's this variable right here so our variable as you can see this is how connect says to do it but of course it doesn't give us the 11.2 so really the 11.2 comes from our variable 273 uh, 280 divided by our standard 24400 so that's $11 and 2 cents and we're going to times it by wherever our standard direct labor hours are 22570 Then that's where our 252784 comes from. Okay. Once you have these, Connect is going to fill out this info, and it's just a subtraction of the two. Again, it's positive and it'll be unfavorable. So nothing I mean the only complicated part is the variable, and then just figure out these numbers right here. So hopefully I gave you a good insight on that. 
Now, question 10 is a long one, just like the first question, question 6. And this is going to bring out basically an overhead budget. And, and it's going to have that actual budget, which was actually at 90% capacity. So, we're going to have actual activity levels of 9,000 units. Fun stuff. So again, the first part that we have is figuring out the controllable variance. And it's going to be our total actual overhead. So total actual overhead right there, 179,660. And again, we got to do this variable overhead. So to figure out a variable overhead, first we're going to take wherever our variable overhead is, which is up here, the cost, so 81,000 divided by the standard direct labor hours gets us to 2.7. So then we take 2.7 times 33,750, which again is not a number that they like to give us. We actually have to change up some capacity. So with that being said, it's our standard hours. So just like before, we have to take our actual level of 9,000 units. And again, we've got to come up with the way that we did in the standard. Which was taking the actual units and times it by our rate, which really was 11,200. So 11,250 because that was the 90%. I don't know why they throw 9,000, but 11,250 and times 3.0, which let me see where they basically production units standard direct labor so they just divided standard direct uh, production and units by standard direct labor hours into that found out that's like three per unit and you basically multiply by the 11,250 that actual capacity which was 90% and that comes out to the 33,750. So variable 2.7 times 33,750. Three, that comes out to our 91,125. Our fixed 9,600 is basically our fixed right here. Again, connect's going to add those two up. So all you have to do is subtract. And you're going to have this 7465 and again connects going to do this as a positive uh, basically yours is going to turn negative again I don't like how connect does this but basically our budget was greater than our actual so it is favorable okay this one should be basically if we subtract, yeah, this will be negative, and it'll be favorable. Okay, again, it's that opposite thing that overhead likes to do. Required two is now taking our total budget fixed overhead, which was the 96, and it wants us to take out fixed overhead applied. So, in order to get fixed overhead applied, it's going to be our fixed overhead rate, which happens to be however our fixed overhead is, divided by our budgeted units, our direct labor hours, standard direct labor hours. That comes out to 3.2. And then it's just multiplying it by that, again, 33,750 that we got from 
basically taking the units actually done times our rate which was again basically units into direct labor hours so again three hours and that ends up producing the 108 subtract the 2 again this is going to actually be a negative number and due to that it's going to be favorable again connect just like the positives I don't know why but you can put in a negative and it'll pretty much probably pretty much accept it still so again that's required two required three in itself is going to take a little bit of time. Alright, so this wants you to prepare an actual, uh, uh, prepare an overhead variance report at the actual activity level of 9000. Either classify as favorable or unfavorable. Okay, so our expected production volume was 80% production level achieved is 90% our volume variance will get from here and that will fill out right here okay and then of course again we have variable which will be indirect materials indirect labor power maintenance and then we got our fixed okay a lot of this is in your notes again so from here this is our basically what they're going to put as actual see all the numbers flow through to right here to total overhead cost of 179,660 boom and then it's going to have our flexible budget now our flexible budget as you can see does not have any of these numbers it's again based on 9,000 so with that being said it, it takes a little bit of fun <laughs> so let me see so with this being said a flexible budget is going to be based on the same thing I, I don't know why it's doing actual Because again, this is eleven thousand two hundred and fifty, so thirty thousand divided two point six six and twelve thousand five hundred. Okay. That's our 33. Yeah, I mean, I'm having a little rounding issue. So if I actually took. Ah. Uh, so. Let's. Let me see. Take this again. Divide by 11,250 equals, take that answer, times it by, hmm, and they're really doing the same thing, and it is close enough, but it's not based on 9,000 units, so, This one in itself I'm wondering if they took the thirty thousand divided by nine thousand times that by eleven to fifty. 
37. No. Because. Yeah, I mean, that, that's a little bit odd how they got that number. Because, again, as you saw, I just took the actual results, because this is how much it's based on, and divided and then multiply it. I almost got exactly what they got. So, they're trying to report on actual level of 9,000 units, and... It doesn't seem that's exactly what's coming out. Because again, 2.66 times 9,000. Not going to come out. And if we do it the 80%, so that's company plan production of 10,000 units, 80% of the production capacity is 12,500. So, hmm. Really good. Take the indirect thirty thousand oh. and I like twelve hundred times that by this is really a question of how they get these numbers because they're not going exactly like they do I am very close to them I take the 11 2500 and times it by 12,500 but that's not going to be exact again because of 10,000 units but if you take 10,000 times 9,000 that doesn't work they really kind of make fun of this so I'm thinking it's taking more of a standard as you can see 33750 is the same thing right here as our standard number of direct labor hours this is really again indirect materials and it seems to follow the same path so I am figuring that they're taking a little bit of these numbers right here and they're dividing all these into 30,000 and then they're multiplying and that would actually seem a little bit more correct in the way that they're doing it so right here you see how they got the 32 they took that they're taking everything by 30 and then they're times it by the direct labor hours. Which is kind of interesting of how they're doing that. So, 1120 times 3. There we go. So, yeah, that's an actual interesting thing that they're doing. So, this is by the rate, but they're taking that number and doing it right there. Uh, so, 45, if we take that same kind of aspect, let's see. Because that's what it is. Okay, so basically 10,000 into 30, okay, so 10,000 into 40, that's what we're going to do, that's 4, so 11,250 
times 4, 4,500. Yep, that's what they're doing. I don't know why that didn't dawn on me like right off. Power 8,000 divided by 10,000 or 8 times 11 to 4, 8 times 11 to 50. So that's what they're doing, guys. Sorry, I don't know why that took me forever to actually just think out. But really, that's all they're doing is the same thing. They're finding the rate by taking the 10,000 units produced and dividing it into each one and then multiplying by the units of capacity. This 9,000 units, I'll just not even mess with. I think that's what even threw me off because I was trying to figure out how Connect was using that number, but it really is it. So once we figure this out, you may have no variance between the actual results. And from that, I mean, some of you may have favorable and unfavorable. Again, if the way that um, overhead is, it's the exact opposite. So if the effects budget is more than the actual, it is favorable. If it's less, like right here, it will be unfavorable. Okay, guys? So hopefully this helps a little bit. I know y'all are probably going to have questions. If you do, leave them in comments. And I will try to see if I can get Connect to actually let me do this to post up a better video. But besides that, hopefully y'all guys have a good one. I'll see y'all later.